Hello, this is Pavos Termok speaking from Ukraine. Kyiv, UETV English Studio in a weekly attempt to bring the hardest truths in easy terms for the whole free world directly from Ukraine. The head of the Pentagon, Lloyd Austin, said that Russian leader Vladimir Putin's reckless and lawless invasion of Ukraine has returned war to Europe on a scale not seen for a long time, so today the world needs NATO more than ever. This is stated in Austin's statement published on the Pentagon's website on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of the founding of NATO. He recalled that 75 years ago, on April 4, 1949, the United States and many of its closest allies signed the North Atlantic Treaty in Washington after the end of the Second World War against the background of the new threat of Soviet aggression, the 12 NATO allies decided to strengthen security in the North Atlantic region, protecting freedom and democracy, and jointly ensuring their collective defense. In the 21st century, NATO remains a pillar of shared security and commitment to this great defense alliance remains America's sacred duty, Austin said in a statement. According to him, today the 32-member alliance is bigger, stronger and more united than ever after the recent historic accession of Finland and Sweden. According to him, the United States and its NATO allies confirm their commitment to consider an attack on one ally as such an attack on all. But while Russia is attacking Ukraine, it is our security that is important. According to the statement of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Bindro Kueba, this main message at the meeting of the Ukraine-NATO Council is Patriot Air Defense Systems. And there are already results. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said that several NATO member states may announce the supply of air defense equipment to Ukraine within the next few days. I look forward to discussing with you how we can further strengthen uh, our cooperation, uh, but also how we can uh, move you uh, towards uh, uh, membership in NATO. Allies have made clear that Ukraine will become a, uh, become a member of the alliance, and we need to ensure that is, that is something we are uh, following uh, up. Uh, we'll also discuss, um, as we also did at the foreign ministerial meeting yesterday, how we can uh, step up uh, and sustain our support for uh, Ukraine, because it also matters for our own security. Uh, and we are discussing how we can uh, create a more robust and predictable uh, uh, framework, uh, uh, institutionalized framework for uh, NATO support to Ukraine. Ukraine is already making progress on various fronts from the sphere of security and defense to the fight against corruption, which indicates the implementation of recommendations for approximation of NATO standards. This was stated by U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken during a press conference following the meetings at the NATO headquarters in Brussels. Blinken emphasized that Ukraine attracts more and more private investments and courageously holds its position on the battlefield. According to him, the country is also making progress in the areas of governance and security, increasing the capacity of anti-corruption institutions and strengthening transparency and accountability of military aid. This week, Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis Shmihal toured the Baltic states. And this trip brought a lot of good news. After all, Latvians, Lithuanians and Estonians understand us Ukrainians because these countries can become the next targets of Russian aggression. In Estonia, Shmihal met with President Aur Karis, Prime Minister of Estonia Kaya Kalas, as well as Rigi Koku parliamentarians led by Speaker Lori Husar. European integration and cooperation in the cybersphere were discussed because Estonia also has experience in repelling Russian cyber attacks. Estonia will also provide assistance with energy equipment. Tallinn also joined the Czech initiative for the purchase of artillery ammunition and also supported the sanctions packages against the aggressor. It's a great pleasure and honor for me to have this negotiation, this very fruitful uh, conversation with uh, friends. Ukraine greatly values the close cooperation and friendship between our countries. Like the recent, recent visit of President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, my visit to Estonia is first and foremost a visit of gratitude to your nation, to your people, to your country, to your government. Gratitude for the comprehensive support and assistance to our country in the light against the Russian aggression. In Latvia, the Ukrainian Prime Minister met with Prime Minister Evika Silenia, President of Latvia Edgas Rinkevich, as well as parliamentarians of the Seima of Latvia, led by Speaker Daiga Mijernia. 
Latvia has provided weapons, ammunition and military goods to Ukraine in the amount of more than 376 million euros, which makes it one of the leaders in terms of percentage of GDP. They discussed joint plans with the government of Latvia to expand cooperation and start joint defense production. Latvia also announced that it will hand over the first drones within the drone coalition to Ukraine. And in Lithuania, the head of the Ukrainian government met with Prime Minister of Lithuania Ingrida Shimonite, the president of Lithuania Gitanas Nausieda. Lithuania provides 35 million euros to the Czech initiative for the purchase of artillery ammunition. In addition, Lithuania is taking an active part in the reconstruction of Ukraine and will allocate another 5 million euros for education and 12 million euros for helping veterans, rebuilding schools and kindergartens and setting up shelters. Shmihal also spoke in three countries about sanctions and confiscation of Russian assets, humanitarian aid, Ukraine's integration into the EU and NATO, and he reminded that the Ukrainian peace formula remains the only comprehensive plan for restoring the territorial integrity of Ukraine and guaranteeing security for the international community. He thanked for the extraordinary level of support from the Baltic peoples. Ukrainians feel and value it highly. Let's fantasize about what the world media headlines would be like if Russia's allies were democratic countries. First, Iran stops supplying weapons to Russia due to dissatisfaction. <laughs> Let's fantasize about what the world media headlines would be like if Russia's allies were democratic countries. First, Iran stops supplying weapons to Russia due to dissatisfaction with the results of the counteroffensive in the Donetsk region. The counteroffensive did not bring Russia quick and significant results. This significantly affected the level of support for the current Iranian government, which advocated increased military technical cooperation with Moscow, while the opposition demanded a focus on security issues in the Middle East. This caused a political crisis within the state, which forces the official Tehran to review its previous decisions. Second, China demands that Russia stop attacks on Ukrainian ports, fearing an increase in world food prices. China, whose population continues to grow forces and fears, uh, the increase in food prices could negatively affect the results of local elections that will be held in November this year. The third, North Korea has refused to hand over operational tactical artillery shells and ballistic missiles to Russia, fearing this could trigger new U.S. sanctions. We will stay with the Russian people as long as necessary, sources in Pyongyang assured. However, at this moment, it is not important to prevent the escalation and expansion of conflict to other regions of Eurasia. Sounds kind of ambiguous, right? So why do we Ukrainians have to hear similar phrases from our allies and partners every time. Are our lives not that important? It's time for more on UATV English. You ask hard questions and we other them in easy terms. The question of this week has been voiced by our viewer, Ricardo St. John, and uh, this question sounded like, apart from incorporating new soldiers, what else does the Russian government and army do? As various experts and politicians have already said, the Russians use hybrid attacks. Over the past months, several countries have announced the discovery of Russian spies among diplomats. Russians also bribe local politicians in Europe. Recently, electronic warfare systems have been actively used in the Kaliningrad region, which affects civilian aviation flights over the Baltic Sea. And the Russians finance mass media that spread propaganda. Very heavily finance. TV channels, newspapers, internet resources are working. And bot farms, lots of bot farms. All of this works now in order to reduce aid to Ukraine and spread lies that benefit the Kremlin. And that's why it is important to get information from reliable sources like us. Because the Russians are very good at propaganda. They were able to convince the entire nation of ghostly Nazis in Ukraine. Of the West's desire to destroy Russia. Although, in fact, the entire West just wants to trade with Russia and receive energy resources from them. But Russian imperialism continues its life, and it will not stop at the Ukrainian borders. That seems to be it for tonight and for this week. It was Pavel Stelmach in UATV English, breaking the hard truths to easy terms for the whole free world directly from Ukraine as usual.
We like you and we hope that this feeling is at least somewhat mutual like us in return. Subscribe, share and help us to promote Ukrainian voice worldwide. Stay safe and tuned for more right already on tomorrow.